So I love it when we have an author picture. And here is Sharon Olds in all of her mystical glory. We've got this scene where a strange interior wind is blowing and her hair is being pushed back. It looks really nice. So today, obviously, we're going to be reading some Sharon Olds poetry because we want to get a knot in our stomach. We want to think about all the terrifying things that go into being a woman in somewhat of a traditional family setting. And I got this book in San Francisco. I went to some book bookstore and my husband says, I'll buy you one book. And I saw this on display. I saw the title. I had not read Sharon Olds before. And I said, oh, that's probably the book I want. Uh, and then I read the poem on the back, which I'll go ahead and just read for you right now. And I was sold. And the poem on the back is called Station. It's also inside, but they made it easy for us. So let's just go ahead and read it here. Station. Coming in off the dock after writing, I approached the house and saw your long grandee face in the light of the lamp with a parchment shade the color of flame. An elegant hand on your beard. Your tapered eyes found me on the lawn. You looked as the Lord looks down from a narrow window, and you were a descendant from lords. Calmly, with no hint of shyness, you examined me, the wife who runs out on the dock to write as soon as one child is in bed, leaving the other to you. Your long mouth, flexible as an archer's bow, did not curve. We spent a moment in the truth of our situation, the poems heavy as poached game hanging from my hands. And I said, wow, let's get this book. And then it was in my car for a while and it mysteriously vanished. I have a couple of conspiracy theories regarding this, mostly, probably, well, I should really give them the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like maybe one of my family members came across it and saw the title and said, I need to burn this book. So uh, I didn't have it for a long time. I got it and then it disappeared. But then the other part of me thinks that's just my karma because I'm always taking books from people. So I hope what really happened was someone saw it and said, oh, this looks interesting. I want to read it. But it's all good for the book business because I bought it again. And if I could get your opinion, you know, I bought it secondhand, but this sure looks like some kind of a, an autograph. Sharon, if you're out there, is this your signature? It doesn't really matter to me if it is or not, because I'm going to keep, keep this book. Uh, and I'll stop yapping. I'm just a little bit excited to read. And we'll read some of this poetry. And, you know, sometimes the difficult things are made less difficult by reading about someone else's experience and having someone put these feelings into words. And so I stumble across a lot of these poems and they're hard to read in, in a way, uh, but poignant and full of honesty, which I appreciate. I always appreciate an honest author. So let's go ahead. I already read Station. I've book eared a couple of these. Let's see what we want to do. Okay, this one's called Drowning, and it's for Emily Davidson. The mothers are sitting in the kitchen late afternoon, light like resin solid in the water with the goldenrod stems, tea like dancers rosin. They dip in their tongues and talk. They're always fearing disaster for their children. The slip between the boards, the nail, the hook, the cellar stairs, all the blood from the small bodies. If you look through the window as darkness seeps in and the room 
is like an amber jar of water. There's an angle, there's a moment, when you can see that each mother has a woman clinging around her neck and bearing down, her own mother grasping her and descending into the failing light. Jesus Christ. That wasn't part of the poem, that was just me saying Jesus Christ. You really do feel like... <laughs> I don't know, there's something hereditary going on in all of my women feelings. Let's read another one. All right, this one's called The Unjustly Punished Child. This child, or excuse me, the child the child screams in his room. Rage heats his head. He's going through changes like metal under deep pressure at high temperatures. When he cools off and comes out of that door, he will not be the same child who ran in and slammed it. An alloy has been added. Now he will crack along different lines when tapped. He is stronger. The long impurification has begun this morning. She really has um, a sense, I think, a sense of a great understanding of all the people that are around her. I get the feeling that this is true. And this book is, this is her first book, and it's spread out into a couple of chunks, sort of chronologically. The first is daughter, the second is woman, the third is mother, and the fourth is journey. And I think I'm reading a lot from mother and I think from journey. Let's find another one. Bear with me. Okay. Coming home after vacation. The car rolled into the drive at dusk and stopped. The woman got out under the huge black trees and went down into the garden and felt something was there. Someone angry. The trees were soaking with darkness and the sprouts stuck out their knives. She stood outside her own garden and saw how the stems twisted their muscles and the whole plot looked like a grave someone was trying to get out of. Suddenly, she felt a big shadow rise up and race over her. Her hand went to her throat, white as a root. She was home, then. This was her place, the one of all others where she feared to walk, where someone had always arrived first and would hold it against her at any cost. Yeah, that gives me a lot of feelings. that I may take some time to describe. Because the thing about poetry for me is it doesn't always put a lot of thoughts into my head, but it does give me a lot of things to feel and it's hard to describe sometimes. But I really think that's, that's what it's for and, and it's good for that. And I'm always trying to write poetry. It's always terrible poetry. But maybe one day I'll write something just, uh, just good. And, um, yeah, we'll make this a short video. Short like a good poem. I hate epic poetry. I also hate that sort of, um, I'm not trying going by. I don't like epic poetry and I don't like uh, Jim Morrison poetry, so. Thank you, Sharon, for, sh for almost did a really bad pun. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing your experiencing, uh, what you're experiencing. And words are starting to fail me. I'm trailing off and I'm in danger of just rambling on for a couple of minutes. So we'll go ahead and say good night here and goodbye. Until next time, we'll see.